Shalom, Shalom, Israel. It's brother Yamarian coming back at two with another cold cut. Today we're going to go over how people have to return back to the Lord in these last days. Because in these last days, you have pestilence, you have the coronavirus, you have World War III coming. You have a lot of things going on in these last days that our people are ignorant of. And we have to return back into the Lord because He is our stronghold, He is our power. Right? For the Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we have a power. We have the only chance of getting out of. Right? We have the only chance of repenting. So we have to come back to our God and to our nationality. Right? Let's go to Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. Because what do we have to do to return back into the Lord? We have to acknowledge our offenses. Right? This is Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and see my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. So if we humble down, if we let go of the pride, right? Because pride goes before destruction. Our people is very prideful, right? We're in a lower state, but we're still prideful because it's in our spirit. We have a kingly spirit, right? What does Sirach say? He said one of the things he hates is a poor man that is proud, right? We're poor as a people, but we're still very pride. Proud. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. Give me the proof for it. This is Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. Pride goeth before destruction in a haughty spirit before a fall. Right? Pride goeth before destruction, right? Let me read uh, 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14 again. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from the wicked way. So if we humble down, try to find who them, try to pray to the most high, right? And seek his face, then what? And turn from our wickedness, meaning stop doing what we're doing. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. That's all we have to do, man. All right, let's go to first Kings chapter eight and verse forty six. This is the book of 1 Kings, chapter 8, and verse 46. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and hast delivered them to the enemy, so that they carry away captives unto the land of their enemy, far or near. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in a land whither they would carry captive, and repent, and make supplications, we will carry captive into the land of America. But if we bethink ourselves, remember who we are, and come back to our nationality, right? Saying we have sinned and have done wicked, wicked. Um, saying we have sinned and have done perversely, and, and we have committed wickedness, and so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven. Thy dwelling place and maintain their cause. So Mosai said, if we return back unto him wholeheartedly again, pray towards him, stop doing our wickedness, man, and remember him and humble down, then will he heal heal us, man, as a nation of people. Right? Because we have to understand America is not our it's not our that's not our home. We're not from here, man. This is not our this is not our dwelling place. We have a whole kingdom to come, man. Let me go to Micah chapter 2, verse 10. This is the book of Micah chapter 2 and verse 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. So the Most High told us arise and to depart, not physically and depart. Not catch a plane ticket and go to another country. He's telling us to arise and depart spiritually, right? Because it is polluted. It shall destroy you, even with the sword destruction. If you take part in America's ways, when I when these bombs hit America, you're going to die with America, man. It is polluted. It's going to destroy you if you stay in the ways of America. Let me go to Revelation chapter 18, and verse 4. All right? This is the book of Revelation chapter 18, and verse 4. 
And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. So the her is Babylon the Great, the daughter of Babylon, America. Come out of her. Stop doing her ways, man. Not physically come out of her, but spiritually, right? Come out of her, my people, that you be not partaker of her sins, right? You don't believe be partaker of her sins, man. Because when America is destroyed because of her sins, you don't want to be with it. That you receive none of her plagues. Receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and Yahweh have remembered her iniquities. Yahweh remembered the iniquities of America, man. You do not want to be destroyed with America. All right, so let's go back to Micah chapter 2, verse 10. And what does it say? Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. Man. America will destroy you, man. We have to come out of the ways of Babylon. Let's go to Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Because we have to renew our mind from this place. We have to relearn everything that we have learned in this country. This backward society, man. Right? This is Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of Yahweh. So we got to renew our minds that we may perform what's acceptable to our God, man. That's what we have to do in these last days. Right? That's what we have to do. Okay? Because ultimately, they changed the truth of God into a lie, man. They told us that God was white. They told us that Jesus was a, was a white man. Right? There were black Africans. There were all these different type of things. They told God is for uh, all good. They turned the truth of God into a lie. All right, let's go to Romans chapter 1 and verse 25. Who changed the truth of Yahweh into a lie? And worship this and serve the creature more than the creator, right? And worshiping Jesus, the so, so uh, um, the white man, Jesus Borges, Jesus Christ, right? The creature more than the creator, right? More than the creator who is blessed forever, amen, right? So that's what they have done. They changed the truth of God into a lie. They're, we they, we, they're not worshiping the God of this Bible. We have the we our God is out of this Bible. We have to read and find out who we are in these last days and to return back. Right? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 42. This is Isaiah chapter 42, verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Who is the Most High talking about? This is a people robbed and spoiled. He's not talking about the so-called Chinese man. You know, the white man is not the... Is, is he's not talking about him? What about the Indian man? Nah, this is but this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. Right? Who is he talking about? Who is filling up these prisons? The so called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans across the nation, across the world. Man, we fill up these prisons and they are for a prey and none delivery. Or spoil or none saith restore. No nation of people has said restore these people to their land. If we're African, why haven't so called Africans saved us from here yet? Why haven't so called Africans came to America and say, let go of my people yet? Because they know we're a different nation of people. They have nothing to do with us, and they know that. So we're no, we're not Africans. None saith restore. No, no nation of people has said, you know what. What we did to them was bad. Let's restore them to their land. No, every nation of people has came against us. According to Psalm chapter 81, right? Verse 1 going on down. Okay? So we have to understand how to we come back. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 16. Because there's, there's a certain process that we have to do, man. We have to clean our garments spiritually. All right, this is Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 16. What did the Lord say? Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from behind mine eyes, cease to do evil. Right? This is what the Most High is telling us, man. Learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow, man. These are righteous things that we have to do, man. Verse 18, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Right, the Most High is willing to be merciful unto us, even though our sins are red as scarlet, man. Right? Though they be a red, a red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Okay? 
If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Right? So if we're willing and obedient, we're going to eat the good of the land, man. Right? But let's see what happens if you're not willing and obedient. If you still decide to be a nigga in America, right? Verse 20. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord have spoken it, you know? That's that's what's going to happen. That's judgment, man. If we decide to stay, decide to stay doing the things that we're doing in America, man. Let's go to Hosea chapter six and verse one. This is the book of Hosea chapter six and verse one, and it says, "Come and let us return unto the Lord, for He hath torn and He will heal us, or He hath torn us apart, man, with the curses." With all these things, he have torn us, but he's also given us a chance to heal us, man. The same person, the same spirit, the same God that has torn us will heal us, man. He have smitten, right? He have smitten us with the curses in Deuteronomy, right? With madness, and he will bind us up. And after two days, he will revive us. And in the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight, man. So that's what's going to happen if we return back unto the Lord, man. We have to do this, man. We have to we have to look at the ways of our forefathers, man, and see what did they do right? What how did they how did they find favor in the sight of our God, man? Right? Let's go to Jeremiah six and sixteen, because what does it tell us to do? This is Jeremiah chapter six and verse sixteen. Thus saith the Lord. Hold on. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. So we have to ask for the old paths. Right? We have to ask for the old paths. We have to look back. See, what did Isaiah do? What did Abraham do? Right? What did King David do? Saul, not Saul, um, Samuel. Right? King Solomon. What did, what, what did our forefathers do? Right? Where is the good way and walk therein? Let me read that again. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the, in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way and walk therein? So we have to ask for what is the good way and we have to walk in those ways. And you shall find rest for your souls. But they said we will not walk therein. Our nation of people said we're not going to walk in the old ways. We're going to do our own thing. We're going to build We're going to build our own thing. Right? Build, um, do idol tree. Right? Be effeminate. Be gay. Do all of these different things, man. That's contrary to the Lord. That's contrary to Yahweh, man. Right? We have to return, man, back unto the Lord. Let me get one more, man. Let me get one more. This is Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 14. <clears throat> Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord. For I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you unto Zion. I will bring you to Zion. So most I said, turn, man. And we already know he's not only one third of Israel is going to be saved. That's why he says he's going to take one of a city and two of a family. Not everybody's going to get saved. But still, he wants us to turn from our wickedness, man. Right. So that was just a little cold cut on. We have to return back to the nation of people in these last days. Because if you're watching these prophecies, if you're watching what's going on in the world, man, it's getting, we are in the last times, man. We are getting there. We are close. And you know what? We are happy, man. Because the kingdom of heaven is right here. We're there, man. Right. Shalom, Israel.